It is Monday, September 27th. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by Jet Home Loans. And now, a guy who never went down 109 yards, but could possibly put down one yard 109 times. <laughs> J.P. Shatrick. Yeah, I, I, I don't dispute that. Welcome in. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on a Monday afternoon after a Jaguars loss. The Jags fell to the Arizona Cardinals yesterday in week three at TIAA Bank Field. A final count of 31-19. Here's what's coming up on the show today. Pete Prisco and Tony Baselli. Prisco is present. Baselli at this moment is not. And we'll get to him at some point, maybe. The uh, third quarter is really where this game turned. Late in the third. We'll uh, break down all of those situations, including the failed flea flicker. And... That play actually put Arizona ahead for good. Social media questions, and we'll go around the National Football League. Pete Prisco with us now. And, uh, Pete, first off, good afternoon to you. We've got a lot to get to today. What's up, JP? Where is uh, Big Bo? I don't know, but uh, we'll take the rating spike anytime we can get it, Pete. So is he on a golf course or what? I mean, is he on like 18 now? He's he just got done 18. He's racing in. Yeah, he's probably got a to-go cup with him. A little styrofoam walking in here. Here he is. Hey, what golf course did you play, Tony? Did you just finish How'd 18, him, get a shower in? Like, yeah. what is, what's up with you no, right no now? No golf today. No golf today. I was actually just How'd right you, next door. How'd you hit him today, Tony? It's only 401. I'm only a minute late. I didn't play golf, Pete. 75? You. 75? Well, you- For the first nine? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you're six minutes late because you're supposed to be here five minutes early. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. Do, are we still working on that uh, schedule here? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not because somebody's we, not hey, We will always adhering. be on that schedule. <laughs> That's a life lesson. What an interesting uh, gonna, what, what an interesting 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> Things have escalated <laughs> Holy the last cow. day or so. The Jags had a nine-point lead yesterday. It slipped away in the third quarter. And they never looked back, and then all of a sudden they traded away a first-round corner today to the Carolina Panthers, Tony. That's well, a lot. And, you know, it, it, and there's so much to unpack there, and I know we want to talk about the game, and we will. Yep. But the trading away of a top-10 pick. Can we a, talk about C.J. Henderson? Let's do it. Yeah, uh, tra- yeah. the trading away of a top-10. Well, I just 10- want to make sure we can. That's all. <laughs> okay, Pete, thanks. <laughs> the trading away of It's a, official now. The team announced it, so yes. Here we a, go. a trading away of a top-10 pick. And I don't know much about Dan Arnold, but would calling him a journeyman tight end, would that be fair? I think so. He was undrafted in 2017 out of Wisconsin Platteville okay. and uh, has been a couple different spots. Yeah, so journeyman yes. bounce around. That's right. My guess is you probably could have got him in the offseason if you wanted him that bad. They actually, Urban actually said that today. We wanted him in free agency. Yep. Um, and you had to give away a fifth to get a third. So you got a guy. I'm not, and maybe he'll turn out to be great. I mean, I hope he does. Maybe he's the next Antonio Gates who is undrafted. You he know, won't so. be. Okay, but, I, but you know what I'm saying, Pete. Um, and you you gave up a top ten pick and a fifth for a third, basically. Um, and a guy you could have gotten not. And so it makes you go back and think this team has had a lot of top ten picks over the last decade. Most of them Go have been. JP, read them out. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, well, all, let's lament them all. Well, I'll say this. We, we have a list of them. If you're watching on Jaguars.com, the, uh, since 2010 or so, uh, 2010 <laughs> or 11, there have been 10 top 10 picks, uh, a lot of first-rounders, but only two of the top 10 picks remain on the team, Trevor Lawrence and Josh Allen in that time. Of course, ETN is on IR right now. Uh, CJ Henderson is now with the Panthers. Taven Bryan is here, but he was later in the first round. The only two top ten picks going back to 2010. Tyson Alualu was one of those. He's with the Steelers. Blaine's with the Bucks now. Of course, Blackman, Joko Bortles, all out of football. Dante Fowler's with the Falcons. Ramsey went to the Rams. Leonard Fournette has a Super Bowl ring in Tampa, and there you go. So I mean, well, these okay, are the these. Here's why, Tony. We can say this now. The Rams won the Jalen Ramsey trade. Oh my! What what what? I, I was trying to remember what picks did we get for Jalen Ramsey? What players? You were got those picks. You got that. Um, which picks was it? It you, was the, what, the you, second. It was the second picks of each round, right? It was the twenty twenty and the twenty. It was the chase on and the ETN, wasn't it? Two firsts. Is that yeah. what it is? No, yeah. I think it's. Um, yeah, that's I right. Look. 
That's it. Is it? Yeah. Well. <laughs> I mean, the bottom line, I mean, and I don't want to revisit the draft or anything like that, but the bottom line is you look at that group of players, and those are supposed to be, I mean, I'm not saying every one of them is going to hit, but those are your starters, and a handful of those guys are supposed to be the stars on the team, the difference makers. Um. And some of them wouldn't be here anyways in a normal. Uh, no, I get that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying all right. of them. I'm saying, so, but like, some should be though, Pete. Well, yeah. Well, R- Ramsey. If Ramsey hadn't had his, um, you know, pouting episode, then he's here. Fowler had all kinds of problems in Jacksonville. Let's be real about it. And but is Don, but, Don, but Dante's probably is he as good or better pass, the name pass rusher we have on the team right now? Uh he's, he had a bad year last year. So did he? So he's up one. Yeah, he didn't play well last. Okay. Year. Um, so, but my point is, here's the other thing that if you look at that list, if I'm not mistaken, only one top 10 pick, cause I don't, th- or maybe it was, uh, um, take out Tyson all cause I didn't go that far back. Okay. But I think only one of them got a second contract and that was Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of people questioned whether he should have anyways. I mean, you could also look at it and say, let's go through the draft and say, uh, okay, the, the draft with the quarterbacks with Gabbard in it, everybody forced those quarterbacks because they were desperate. Um, uh, baby baby Baselli was never any good, but that draft was awful from top to bottom. Remember, one of the other guys that were going to draft in that draft was Deion Jordan if they hadn't taken Jokel, and he was a bust. The number one overall pick was Fisher. He's now on his second team. Um, so uh, there are instances for a lot of them, but yeah, they blew the picks. They blew them. And and this Henderson pick is really weird because we had the incident, the issue, whatever went on in the preseason. And then he was inactive on Sunday. Now they said he had an ankle injury. I think it was during the week. But then there was an an illness. It was a groin and an illness is what it was. Okay. Listen, are those real? <laughs> I don't. I mean, the bottom line is, it, it's and it's highlighted. Did you, like, did you guys think anything was up when he wasn't active yesterday? No, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't expect him to play. I guess it's from the beginning. I guess the, the, does he? He never loved the game. That's what you hear. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if it's true or not. This is all I know. The only things I know that are true is why this is a major issue is because it's not just the missing in the draft and building out the foundation of a franchise that if you look around and go up and down the, the roster right now and you compare it to other rosters, you're probably not as talented as some most teams. And and it's highlighted by that we've lost 18 straight games. There's no core There's Jaguar foundation of blue chip guys you drafted very high and developed and signed again. That just doesn't exist around here. And that's that's has to change. Now, in fairness to Urban, he just got here. Yeah. So that's not that list of people. That's not on his watch. And so you can't put that on him. He's trying to. Well, his dra- his first draft isn't exactly lighting it up either. Well, in you have well the injury to ETN, you know, is what right. it is. Okay. The quarterback, uh, to your point, but again, is the only one out there really. You draft a running back in that spot. There's always a chance a running back's going to get hurt. Right, I, I didn't love of the position. Pete. I didn't love the pick either. We've talked about this. We, we, I okay. didn't love the pick, but the so picks keep made. Going through the draft, Lawrence number one. That was yep. a no-brainer. Uh, you could have put Tony. Your, your children, when they were eight, could have brought that card to the table and picked that guy. Okay, okay? so let's not. All right, so <laughs> then ETN, ETN we didn't like. Then Tyson, Campbell, Ty, yeah, Tyson Campbell, who is going to get more run now, obviously. Well, the ball skill, the ball skills aren't and, there yet. And that was, and by the way, that was a that was the book on him coming out of Georgia. I mean, draft night. If you looked at anything, any of the reports, it was, you know, finishing and ball skills. And I heard that from other coaches as well. That was the book. All right, uh, Cisco. He, oh, you, you skip Walker Little. But Walker yeah. Little's been Walker, hasn't well, been Walker active Little's, yet. Right, um, Cisco. Cisco is can't can't beat out Winger. Tefelli's been so two, inactive. So so two guys that you drafted with injury histories, anyways. Right. I, I mean, they were both had major injury issues. Go ahead. Tefelli. So there's, there's what? Jay Tefelli, yeah, defensive he tackle, he Southern Cal. Active. No, he hasn't been active yet. I don't think nope, has he? Has not. No, the pass rusher from Birmingham. Yep, Jordan, Jordan Smith. Smith. Jordan Smith. Nothing. No. 
By the way, he I mean, was one of the he was one of the additional picks in that Jalen Ramsey trade. They ended up getting okay. Jordan so, Smith. so Tony, so of you talk about those old drafts. This draft doesn't produce as much of anything either. Yeah, but Pete, in fairness, it's early. I mean, you, like you say all the time, you can't make a you can't judge a draft to probably two or three years down. No, the line. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying right now this draft is producing nothing, except for Trevor Lawrence. Let's hear from head coach Urban Meyer today. He spoke with the media the day after press conference. The big news, though, was about the trade of C.J. Henderson. I think number one is the development of uh, Tyson Campbell. He's starting to perform at what we expect him to be. Uh, he's a very, very talented guy. You get Trey Herndon back, which you can play a nickel. Um, and we have to improve a lot of areas of our team. And, and uh, you know, just uh, see, it might be a good fresh start for CJ. Uh, I had a great visit with him, his family, and uh, I love CJ and spent a lot of time with him and his parents. And uh, I think it's going to be good for both of us. So, of course, as we mentioned, uh, Henderson goes to the Carolina Panthers. The uh, Jaguars receive tight end Dan Arnold, who's been in the league for a few years now. They trade uh, picks, the third-round pick coming to the Jags, fifth-round pick going to the Panthers, per reports. So, uh, you know, and obviously tight end was a little bit of an issue yesterday with Hollister with a drop, and that caused the first interception for Lawrence. And there's not a lot of depth at that, uh, uh, at least at receiving tight end these days. So we'll see if Dan Arnold can yeah, step into that role. Uh, I'm sorry, but you don't give up on a top 10 corner a year and three games into his career. Remember, he only played eight games last year, Pete. Yeah, you don't give up on him. There's a, it has to be other things at play here. Has to be. Oh, yeah, and I mean, can, obviously, you're not giving up on him because of, like there, there is a much bigger story behind the scenes. Because Pete, it's nonsensical well, to think that they, they went to his house and they went to his house in camp. They admitted they that. That's right. They went knocking the door. Supposedly he didn't want to. At one point, you heard he didn't want to play then. Well, that's my point, Pete. I mean, this is like there's a bigger issue here than just like because I'll, I'll I will argue this. He's the most talented corner on this team, or he was. Here's something I just, can't. If figure you just out. said straight talent, right? Of course he is. Here's something I can't figure out. Did Urban recruit him to Florida? No. Mm -mm. Okay, so why in the hell is he spending time with his parents? That, that's a good. That's a good <laughs> I, don't I don't know. <laughs> this is the NFL. He's a man. What are you talking to the parents for? Uh, he cares about him. Like I don't know. He's in house, Tony. <laughs> did did, did Coughlin call your dad? No, he did not, Pete. Okay, I mean. You're men. He doesn't need to be talking to his parents. He's a man. He's now a Panther. Why are you laughing? That's all he's laughing over That's <laughs> what he is. He's a Carolina Panther now. The trade is done, and the Jaguars oh, are Rule moving called on. I his parents and asked him if it was okay to trade for him. <laughs> You're unbelievable, Pete. <laughs> I mean, it's just – I mean, I agree with Pete from the standpoint, not his stupid tirade about calling parents or anything. Like, <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, to you give do. up on a top ten pick this early, no, it's that's talented. Yeah. That's just add it to the list. It feels like, right, Tone? I mean, it's just another, uh, another, <sighs> another thing. It's what it is. It's what's happened. We've well, got, I mean, and you go. I mean, and we'll get into this. Yep. Yeah. You know, and you look at this. I give the D. I, you know, looking at the game. You know, and the side of the ball that C.J. Henderson used to play for this team. Um, I thought the defense played well. I, I, I give him credit, but offensively, guys, you got to score more than 20 points in two weeks. No doubt. We'll come back. We're going to get into the game, Pete, when we come back as well, and that late third quarter swing in the game, too. That's where the momentum really changed, and the Cardinals' offense got down the field. Those were really the two big drives in that game where the defense didn't perform well. The rest of the game they did. That's all coming up. Second hour, we'll have social media questions. We've got a lot to get to on a busy Monday. We're off and running. It's Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Jet Home Loans on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by DreamFinders Homes, homes that fit your lifestyle. And by Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. 
At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. At ViStar, we believe in better, especially in helping build a better financial future for our members. So we've reviewed our offerings from the ground up. We've lowered or eliminated over half our fees and enhanced our already competitive rates, saving members more than a million dollars this year, in addition to the millions we save them every year. If you believe that saving money is better, join ViStar. Visit ViStarCU.org. All loans subject to approval, insured by NCUA. This is Ice T. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Matty Ice. This is a cold call. I convinced NFL teams to turn to cold water washing with Tide. The NFL, your uniforms get dirty. Tide can handle it, even in cold. Plus, if fans join in, they can save up to $150 on their energy bill. Looks like you just made the team, rookie. Turn to cold with Tide. And that's the bottom line. It's got to be Tide. Energy savings based on average from switching from hot to cold to non aging machines. It's Monday Madness at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. What are you, crazy? It's not crazy. Pick up the official smoothie of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Duval Delight, for just $2.99 at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. I don't think you're crazy. It's Monday Madness at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. What are you, crazy? It's not crazy. Pick up the official smoothie of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Duval Delight, for just $2.99 at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. I don't think you're crazy. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. A trick play there, and I, I kind of had a guy on my face, so I threw it off my back foot, and I really didn't see the, the corner fall off on it there, um, but I kind of saw him as the ball was coming down, so just not a good decision, but yeah, I didn't really, didn't really see the guy there. I thought we had our tight end, Jake open and um but like i said it was off my back foot didn't help and then got to just throw it away if, if the guy's close and you know pr- protect that you can't defense has been playing great and just give them seven points there which just makes it tough that's the quarterback of course trevor lawrence after his uh, interception return for a touchdown in yesterday's third quarter in the waning seconds of the third and welcome back it's jaguars happy hour jp shadrick tony baselli pete prisco recapping a Jaguars loss in week number three, 31-19, the final score. What are you guys laughing at? Can I even get because, through the intro of the game first? When I No, you know why? Whenever I go on one of my rants, I can tell Bazzelli agrees with me. He just doesn't want to say <laughs> Oh, so let's talk about the let's talk about the flea flicker. Yeah, let's. Because we were, we, were te- we were texting earlier, and Pete, you hated the call in that position. Um, I, I, I didn't have as much a problem with you. Pete, Pete is correct. Typically, you see that flea flicker or that style of play called the like, call it at the fifty or the okay. minus forty five, yeah. somewhere around midfield because okay. because the risk reward. Um, I didn't have a problem with it because if it's blocked up correctly and it was not blocked correctly, DJ Chark is ten yards behind the defense, and it is a he sure is it's a it's a house call. Now, I don't know what the communication was in. 
during the week on that play or in his ear. But if I'm in the kid's ear, in uh, Trevor Lawrence's ear, I'm saying if it's not wide open and not there, throw it in the first row of the stands. And just like – No matter what. No matter what. If it's not wide open, if you have pressure, anything else, throw it in the first row. Because worst case scenario, it's third and six. And our defense is playing good now. The defense was playing good, but they just got drove all the way down and mm-hmm. um, Arizona was starting to move the ball. But regardless, um, it was a higher risk in the, because of the field area of field they did. But let's be clear, they had nine straight runs. They were pounding them. They were r- driving the ball. They were having success, and it worked beautifully. I mean, it was a house call. They just got to block it. And if you're not going to block it, throw it in the stands. So just a couple errors there, execution errors. Mm-hmm. So I put less on the uh, on the play call by Daryl Bevel. I know Pete didn't love the area of the field that it was done, and that's fair because Pete would Pete's right. Most coaches would not call it that backed up. Yeah, and, and they just ran it down their throat that let drive before. That, I mean, I get it. That's when you set that up, Tony, and I, I understand that. I just would wait see if you get the drive going again, and then when you get closer to midfield, then you take, then you pull it out and you do it. Uh, you're right. Shark was wide open. I mean, he beat Buda Baker uh, with that double move, and he was wide open. There's ball handling involved, though, and protection issues. And, and look, if we run that playback, what is that, Carlos? What is Carlos Hyde doing? Even is I know it's not his guy, but is he, could he get a? I couldn't really tell when I was. Can can he get a piece of him? Um, no, yeah, no, because no. he was turning. He got beat so fast. Yeah. I mean, it was just. It was not executed like properly up front. Uh, yeah, That's, it wasn't. And it was, and, uh, you know, the whirling dervish. What would you call that? What they <laughs> the whirly bird. So, the whirly bird is what Jawan yeah. Taylor called it today. Yeah, it's not on Carlos Hyde. That's on, in my opinion, it's Andrew Norwell, Norwell and right? Will Richardson. That's the, who yeah. it's on. Yeah. But, again, what, and I never saw Trevor really looking down the field. Well, and, he didn't yeah, have a chance because as soon as he caught it, J.J.'s yeah. in his face. Yeah. And J.J. takes those quick slant chances all the time you know how that is Tony. Yeah. he did it but uh, yeah again i don't mind aggressiveness from this team i really don't and so i understand that you got to pull off some things to try and win and they got one on a kickoff return for a touchdown off a, a miss or miss field goal return Which, for a by touchdown. the way that was a terrible decision by cliff kingsbury Awful. you, you Awful. get what you deserve when you're yeah, going like, for 68 first of all like two things one it's so low percentage of you oh. hitting it and so what if you do? It's a three-point game. Yeah. It's like, are right. you kidding me? It's and made, secondly, second cover it. is you have five offensive linemen covering against a guy who just returned a kick for 102 yards the week before. Like, but, what a, are you thinking? A bunch of fat guys chasing a little fast guy around. I'm like, that one yeah. right there, yeah. that was a yeah. gift. A gift from Cliff Kingsbury. Well, at least they showed some speed in that play. <laughs> Pete... <laughs> Well, is, is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gutting to the next part of that. Should they get him the ball some? Yeah, I mean, I think you could. I mean, he's, I mean, you know, he, he's, he's only played receiver for like a year. Yeah, he's I know, a DB. But, but you can gimmick up some garbage. You know how this league is now. They gimmick up crap for guys. Yeah, I mean, I think you maybe get on the field. But, I mean, he's a heck of a returner. I mean, there's no doubt about that. He has vision, and he can, he has wheels, and he can make guys miss. He's a good player. He's on his way to all pro right now at this pace. So, but again, again, um, I they had momentum. They went down, drove the ball down, and I know that the Cardinals had scored. James Robinson, they were blasting open holes for him too. Yeah, I I would have I would have just pounded it until I got to midfield. That's what I would have done. And you know me, Tony. I'm a pass-first guy. But when you come off a drive where you just ram it down their throat without throwing a pass, go until they stop it. Yeah, they had gone eight straight plays with a run. Oh, nine. I thought it was wasn't nine. It sorry. The first one of that drive was, wasn't it? Wasn't it nine? I thought they went eight on the drive and then one more on the first play. Yeah. The next drive. Uh, there I you think. go. Yeah, eight on that drive, though. Yeah. Yes. And then nine. And then what was the how many what was the yardage on the first run that in that series? Four. It was it was second and six. <laughs> Okay, so go get four more, and you're in third and two. Get four more, and you got a first down. Then you get the midfield, then you take that shot. The timing of the shot, the execution was bad, like you said, but the timing of the shot wasn't good. It's a good idea if you get to midfield. Sure. Um, yeah, it's, but it's a bigger issue to me, Pete, because even though we're – I mean, the offense did good things and the run game was better, and James Robinson proves out what – 
we've been saying, I mean, I've been saying, Jeff's been saying, I think Pete, like from the beginning of the season, he, the offense should go through James Robinson until Trevor is, you know, um, it'll make it'll be the best development for him. Like run the offense through James, and they finally did. And I'm not sure how many carries he had. I would still give him more. Um, him and Carlos Hyde, that's the strength of this team right now. And I, so I give Daryl Bevel credit there. But even with that, they only scored 13 points as an offense. Right, right. I get I mean, it. Listen, like, mm. Well, they don't have any chunk plays in the passing game. They don't get chunk plays. Yeah, I mean, so like, like you, like, like you can, you can, t- you can blame the pick six. Like my flip side, the, okay, okay, call something else. Don't throw a pick six. Well, Cliff Kingsbury, don't try to kick a sixty-eight hours field goal. So just take those two scores off the board. It's still twenty. Right. It's twenty-four thirteen or whatever. But like, okay, Lawrence has to hit Chark on the deep throw down the left sideline. He's beaten his man. He missed him early in the game. Remember, but. If for Jaguar fans out there that worry about Trevor Lawrence, the Chark touchdown pass, there's only so many human beings on the planet. That, that was amazing. That the sure. fact that when he I threw mean, it, I was like, where is he throwing it? <laughs> you know, there, and, he, and he had him earlier, but he waited too long and he missed him. But then he got, and then he got him there. That throw, <laughs> there are only so many people on the planet who can make that throw. That's why you're encouraged about that guy. Yeah, his stats aren't great. He's turning the ball over. The one interception clearly wasn't on him. It went right off his hand. This throw here. Look at his throw. Yeah, I mean, back, it looks like he's covered. Yeah, back left corner. There's just no room at all there, and he put it right on the money. Yeah, it was. I mean, he, I mean, the story of the game is the. I mean, the pick six maybe part of it, and the kick return or field goal return for a touchdown part of the story. Absolutely. But it's the, it's the constant mistakes. Take those two plays out. It's the Jacob Hostetler, you know, uh, you Hollister, know, Hollister, Hollister, whatever his name He's is. Now Jeff Hostetler's kid, huh? Jeff Hostetler playing quarterback. <laughs> Jacob Hollister. I mean, you gotta, gotta catch that. Gotta catch that first ball. of all, why are you jumping? Run yeah. through the catch and keep going. And I think Urban said it last night. That's a catch you got to have. I mean, oh, it's like, a veteran like, tight end. Make the, fir- help way, your help your kid quarterback it's out. First, it's first. Okay, ten at the twelve. Do they still dump C.J. Henderson for Dan Arnold? I don't know, but that, that at minimum you lose three there. It may be seven. Right. I mean, and, so it, and it flips. It changes the feel of the game, right? It there. changes everything. Yep. And by the yeah. way, if they uh, and then they even it, and, for, the, and the other one, you're down there driving late in the game, and maybe uh, you're down two scores. It's late. It's like f- four or five minutes left, mm-hmm. and James Robinson runs into Trevor's arm, fumble. Like if you go yeah. score there, guess what? Right, you're still right. in it. Little mistakes, it, 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 but I, I, I'm going to give them credit. And you got you probably think this is strange for me to say this after where I've been the last two weeks. I think they were better this week. They were better, and that's a good sign. That's a sign of progress and growth. Fans don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that at all. They're tired of the losing. But if you're looking at this in the big picture of everything, and there are questions about the big picture. They made progress this week. They were better. They were a better football team than they were a week ago. And that's a good thing because this Arizona team is a good football team. Well, and Pete, but so, they, I guess, yes, I agree with you, but they are going to have to continue to get better because now they go a short week to Cincinnati. Mm. Historically, it's hard as the road team to win on Thursday night, and you're playing against a Cincinnati team that's pretty good. I'm not saying they're great, but they're pretty good. And then after that, you know, now you Tennessee play seven home. straight teams that had ten wins last year. Tennessee, Miami, Miami Seattle, I mean, Buffalo, Buffalo. It's like oof. Indy, ouch. San Fran. Mm. Yeah, uh, that record's in sight. Let's just say that. What record? The longest losing streak. Twenty six. That. <laughs> yeah. So you, that means they have to lose eight more to tie it. Okay, you just read through the schedule. You, th- this week is tough on Thursday night. You know that. It's tough. You, I agree. you said it. And that I, Bengals team has actually got some good young players that are playing pretty good football. I okay, just don't, now, I don't see them losing eight straight from here. 11 and 0 oh and 11? Well, the, they'll tie the Lions this week for 19 if they right. lose. Yeah, the Falcons would be the uh, the tying if they were to lose. Where's that? That's in there. Jacksonville. That's that game? in Jacksonville, and it's week twelve. And then they're at the Rams the next week. Now, now the 
Fal- the Falcons have some veteran players who might be looking to uh, Cancun by then. So Did they that lose might this week? One. No, they won this week. They beat the Giants. They rallied from behind to beat the Giants. Are they one so and two? Not, what are, what's one and two. One and two. Hmm. Got a winnable game this week against Washington, so they could be two and two. So they could, that game might not – be what we think it is. Hey, look. Well, here's the thing. It's, if, let's if, put it if, this if, way. It's more possible that it happens, to, in my eyes, than they win three games. All they need to do is win one to not have it happen. <laughs> but I'm saying. One. It's, all they have to do, Pete, more, is win one, not turn the ball over four that, times, and they don't do it. It's more likely that they lose ten straight than they win three out of the next ten, in if my If they mind. protect the football one game, they can win a football game. Right. Yeah, thank right. you, Tony. Please answer my question and say thank yes. you. Like JP, somebody JP agree with right. me. I agree. Please I agree, yes. JP. Please, I agree, somebody JP. Somebody in Jacksonville. I don't think they're getting the record. I think they'll win a game. No, you just but said they're getting the record. It's possible. But <laughs> you just, just, just exactly toward, said yeah, that. I lean more toward them getting the record. They're than not breaking not the record. The record. I'll lock it right now. All lock right. it. He's not breaking the record. That's a walk-off lock for Tony. We're losing him for the next hour, Pete. It's me and you. It's the highest rated <laughs> portion ever. Highest rated, rated hour. Ratings, ratings, ratings are going up. It's going to be huge. Thanks for walking in front of my camera, Tony. Appreciate that. We, uh, we've we got plenty ahead on Jaguars Happy Hour. Uh, hey, and check out the official Jaguars Podcast Network. It's a free subscription on Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you download your pods. Give us that five-star rating as always. Jaguars Defense Talk. They had a pretty good day yesterday. They had a couple drives where, uh, towards the end of that third quarter and into the fourth where they'd like to have back, I think. We'll get into that coming up. This Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Jet Home Loans on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by TIAA Bank. Turn potential into progress. And by Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. At most sandwich places, asking for more of something is just part of the drill. But what if you never had to ask for more? What if more was just a given? At Daly's, more is what our sandwiches are built on. More meat, more cheese, more veggies, more quality, more taste. All for a price that's anything but more. Sandwiches from Dash, made fresh, Daly's. So, it's happy hour. Let's talk whiskey options. Have you tried Citrus Distillers? Have you tried Citrus Distillers Limited Edition 2021 Barrel Aged Jaguar Whiskey? Did you know it's only available for a limited time and manufactured in Jacksonville? Yes, Jacksonville. I said local whiskey. Try it on the rocks or in a Jack's Whiskey Sour. Citrus Distillers Jaguars Whiskey is available at local liquor stores, restaurants, and the Jaguar Stadium. Drink local, Jacksonville. Find recipes and events at jaguarswhiskey.com. Pinpoint, the official signage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, helps business decision makers like you maximize the impact of their brand. Your company's identification, advertising, and even the words you use make an impression on your clients. With Pinpoint as your coach, you can make sure it's a good impression. Pinpoint provides the creative design and production services for anything you need to enhance your brand. From custom signage to complete marketing solutions. Step up your game with Pinpoint and create the ultimate brand experience for your clients. Visit experiencepinpoint.com. This is Ice T. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Matty Ice. This is a cold call. I convinced NFL teams to turn to cold water washing with Tide. The NFL, your uniforms get dirty. Tide can handle it, even in cold. Plus, if fans join in, they can save up to $150 on their energy bill. Looks like you just made the team, rookie. Turn to cold with Tide. And that's the bottom line. It's got to be Tide. Energy savings based on average from switching from hot to cold and non-HE machines. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card 
comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JAGSCART. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville Sports Talk for Jacksonville sports fans. 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, uh, the score is going to dictate, you know, wins or losses or whatever, but, man, I feel like as a group, as a team, man, I feel like we, we you know, we, we, we took that next step. We just got to finish, you know what I'm saying? We're a young team, but I'm tired of hearing we're a young team. You know what I mean? We just got to learn how to finish. and. But we're, it's coming soon. Like that's why I've been telling telling everybody, like, man. We play Thursday. That could, probably could have been the best thing that happened to us, as a team, as players, individually, as coaching staffs, and as an organization. That we play Thursday, man, because we know we should have won this game, and uh, it's over. Now we can move on quicker, faster, and just worry about the next one. That's Josh Allen, Jaguars defensive end and outside linebacker after the game yesterday. A Jaguars loss in week number three to fall to 0-3 on the season. Welcome back. It's Jaguars happy hour on a Monday afternoon. J.P. Shadrick, CBS Sports senior writer Pete Prisco with us. Tony Baselli is not. He's gone for the next he hour. Down. He gone. See ya. He, he, did we trade him? He, <laughs> he might be next on the list, Pete. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. What could we get for him? A turkey sandwich, roast yeah. beef sandwich. What could we get? Uh, some peanuts, something like that. You know, I don't something know. like that. That's about he's, it. He's got yeah. new hips, so that he's got that going for him. So I don't know. Uh, you know what? He liked the flea flicker. I did not, but he, I just think that I understand the reasoning behind it. Yeah. When you're a desperate team and you're not a great team, you take chances. You got to get but that I just spark, went, right? I didn't they like, talked about I would have done it there after the way they drove the ball on the ground, the possession before. But see, so uh, I would have. Uh, the other argument is that because they ran the ball so well in the possession before, plus one play, that's nine straight plays. That might be a time to do it. Uh, you or know. It might be a, go to twelve straight plays and get to the forty. I or mean, that's, you could that's do the that way too. I feel about or it. you could yeah. throw it out of bounds. Or you could block JJ Watt, the three-time All-Pro. How about that? Right. Block him. But if you, if you do throw it out of bounds, you're still in third and six from your own end. And and but that's the play to throw it out of bounds. That's what he should have done. Yeah. Well, I love. Just, by the way. Yeah. I love the way he handles himself after mistakes. You're talking about Trevor Lawrence, yes. Correct. Absolutely, and he and he and he handles himself like a pro at the press conference afterwards. And I don't, I haven't dealt with him, but I can imagine the guys that do. The local media, you know, Mark Long and DeRocco and that gang, John Reed, all of them. I bet they they like the candor. I would have I would have loved being around a guy who stands up for his mistakes and stands up for and says what, what happened and describes it in detail. Yeah. I mean, does, it's good. There's a lot of those guys will bristle under any sort of perceived criticism of their play in a game. We've seen that here before, you know, and it doesn't feel that way with, with Trevor so far, just watching his post, you hope especially that, in the post game. Yeah, JP, you hope that being in the league for four or five years doesn't knock that out of him. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's right. You can become because jaded real quick. Because now he's a wide-eyed kid, right? Yeah, he's right. enjoying himself. He's having fun. He's, uh, you know, he talks about it when he's not supposed to win games. Mm-hmm. What will he be like when he's supposed to win games? But that, that, remember, though, the question with him was, how would he be when he lost games because he didn't lose any regular season he, games? And I is, think he's been a, I think he's a pro's pro. He's been great so far, and now it's just a matter of putting it all together and and not turning the ball over, like I said a moment ago, and and getting over the top and and finishing a football game. Part of that, Pete is on the defensive side. And it felt like yesterday, especially in the first half, I mean, there was a one-touchdown drive in the first half for Arizona where Kyler Murray did the the naked bootleg around the left and got into the end zone. That was a seven-play drive. But beyond that, in the first half, when the Jaguars had forced two three-and-outs, two other punts, and that was it. I mean, they they were really in control in the first half. It did slip away, though, at the end of that third quarter with those touchdown drives. The Jags got up 19-10. And then the Cardinals, a, a playoff caliber team, go right down the field in two minutes, 12 seconds, five plays, boom, touchdown to get within two. Then the flea flicker play happened two plays later. 
So in a, a span of seven scrimmage snaps, the Jaguars' nine-point lead was a five-point deficit all of a sudden. Well, what do the Cardinals do? They get a three and out on defense and then drive ten plays in si- nearly seven minutes and kill the game with a touchdown. And that's what good teams do. They put other teams away like the Jags. Yeah, and, and I thought the defense was better. I thought you know Joe Cullen had a good plan. They still don't rush the passer well enough. Now, it's hard to rush that guy. It's hard to rush Kyler Murray because he gets outside the pocket. And he does so many different things with his legs and and keeps his head up and makes plays. So I understand that, but they got to be better rushing the passer. That that's you know one of the top priorities. Uh, but I, I think all in all they were okay on defense. It wasn't awful. I mean, again, we go back to the one long pass to AJ Green. Campbell's there. He's got to make the play on the ball. Yeah, it was up in the air yeah, forever. It felt like it wasn't like yeah. a dart down the field. I mean, it was a duck. No, almost make a play on the ball. But he, he's there. So, like when you look at that play, you say, okay, he covered him. He just didn't make a play on the ball. So it's kind of like a plus and a minus. It's better than having a guy wide open twenty yards behind you or <laughs> ten yards behind you. So right. um, there are there were some good things. I thought Wilson played pretty solid at linebacker. Yeah, I, I the ta- he nice was, tackle for loss back there at one point. I remember that. Yep. Yeah, he was okay. Uh, you know, people have been critical of Winger. He played well. Yeah, the interception in the end zone brought it back out, and but not just that, he played tackles. well in, in, in a lot of areas. I thought, yeah. I thought he was solid on on. on um, Has the criticism I mean, I don't think been fair of him though, Pete? Has it it sounds like fair? he got a little angry with <laughs> it this week by some of the stuff I read. <laughs> right, he just one of the quotes that uh, walking off the practice field one day, it sounded like he had, you know, I'm not listening to it, but I'm listening to it kind of thing. Yeah, where did, okay, but <laughs> as, aside from us on here, is anybody else? I think it's social I, media. The social media world is all over him. Okay. You know? All right. And, and uh, you know, you know me, if I'm going to criticize somebody, I'm also going to tell you if he's playing well. And he played well. I thought he played pretty well on, on, uh, on Sunday. So I'm going to give him credit for that. Let's see. We're going through the list here. We talked about Campbell. Miles Jack had 10 tackles in the game. He led the way defensively in terms of that yesterday. Um, how about the back end guy, the safeties uh, beyond Wingard? How about uh, Rayshon Jenkins in yesterday's game? He's a good. He was okay. He's a good player. I, I thought um, Malcolm Brown did a couple of things here and there. But w- Roy Robertson-Harris, what's his injury? He was out. It was, uh, I believe, an ankle, if I remember right, last yeah. week. Yeah, he was so on the list. Not last having week. him in there yeah. showed up. Hamilton stout against the run. Um, Chase on what's his stat sheet? Because it wasn't great. Chase on three combined tackles, two solos, one assist, and the rest goose eggs. And I'll check the amount of plays he played for you. He, you know, and it's kind of been that this season so far, right, Pete? It's not like he's had a, a breakout day yet in three weeks of no. the regular season. No. No, uh, he's and, one of the few first rounders left on the team. You know. Well, here and that's the thing. Now, now you're evaluating that draft. You thought you got your one of your edge rushers and a cover corner, and as of right now, you have neither because the corner's gone and the edge rusher's not rushing. Yeah, uh, Chase on played 31 snaps. That's 46 percent of the snaps yesterday. There were 67 uh, defensive snaps in the game. Yeah, I mean, he's just he. He might be one of those guys where eventually it just goes on, and when it does, you know, we've seen that before. Like, Shaq Barrett was a guy that initially wasn't a great, great pass rusher and started doing it. So maybe it gets – because he's got a lot of athletic ability. but uh, And he's been better this year. It's just where he was drafted, he will be always judged on being an elite edge rusher. And if he doesn't get there, he's never – you know, Dante Fowler was the same way. Sure he was. Dante I mean, he was Fowler was always pick. going to be graded on being an elite edge rusher. Remember, Dante Fowler was good against the run. He was tough. He was physical. And he'd fall into whatever sacks. He had the one good year in the, with the Rams when everybody doubled Aaron Donald and he took mm-hmm. advantage of it. But he's not an elite edge rusher. He's just a good football player who is a decent edge rusher. And they need Chase on to become a good football player who's a decent edge rusher because right now, He's not a decent edge rusher. He doesn't provide him anything from there. So the uh, you know there were a lot of names on that injury report last week, and one of those has been traded today. And C.J. Henderson, if you've just joined us or missed the news today, C.J. Henderson traded to the Carolina Panthers in exchange for 
a tight end who was undrafted back in 2017. They swapped some draft picks in there as well. So a lot of uh, moving parts. Yeah, Dan Arnold's coming to the Jags, a third-round pick from the Panthers. The Jags give up Henderson and a fifth-round pick in the trade today. Uh, that was done uh, this afternoon. And, uh, in fact, uh, Pete, by the way, some news uh, a little bit ago. The Jaguars have placed uh, wide receiver Tavon Austin on IR designated to return. Uh, and they've signed kicker Matthew Wright to the practice squad and released Philip Dorsett the second from the practice squad. So um, Ma- Matthew Wright was at uh, Central Florida, if I remember right, Pete. He was uh, with the Steelers for a minute, then was with the Tampa Bay Vipers in the XFL, was drafted by them, if you're into that, and then Does came Lambo back to the Steelers. Does Lambeau make it to Thursday, JP? I the short week might be the only thing that saves it, Pete. In my opinion. Well, if this kid comes in and booms it for the next two days, then don't you think he can make a deal? Make it. He, he look, kickers are weird. It's a weird. Just make your damn kick. Is that's all I ever say. Extra if points. I was a coach and my yeah. if I was a, ki- a coach and my kicker missed one, I'd be all over him. I mean, come on, dude. That's your old job. You stand around all day and you kick. That's all you do. That's you. You get paid, and, and if I'm not mistaken, Lambo's making like four and a half million He's at least well. next year. He's doing well. Okay, make your damn kicks, and if you don't make your damn kicks, you're gone. There's a million kickers out there. If you find one, and then he gets into a rhythm, you'll have him a long time. You want to see Jason Myers? Remember Jason I, Myers? I, I, he, he finally missed. Yesterday. He had made 36 in a row. JP, he finally missed yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, another one. Matt Gay for the Rams. He bangs them through from everywhere. Well, Matt Gay was let go by the Bucks, and, and so once you get one and he gets in the – Lambo was released. He was that guy he too. Rhythm. He was exactly that guy until right. he's so not. Now, now maybe the confidence is gone, so you get rid of him, you get another one. You got you to make – There's a million points. kickers with big legs. Right, and I get – the 50 yarders and all that, that's long range. He'd always been pretty automatic in those also. But when you start missing extra points, that's when, at least Urban Meyer said it too, you start missing extra points, that's when you start got to start bringing some other options in. And that's what they've done. Uh, Pete, let's take a timeout. We'll come back. Plenty more ahead. We are Baselli free until 5.30 today. So what a program this is going to be for the next 45 minutes or so. He'll be back with us in a little while. Your social media questions when he returns. We'll go around the NFL early in the second hour coming up in just a little bit. This Jaguars happy hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit dreamfindershomes.com. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 44 years straight. Built for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. This is Ice-T. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Matty Ice. This is a cold car. I convinced NFL teams to turn to cold water washing with Tide. The NFL, your uniforms get dirty. Tide can handle it, even in cold. Plus, if fans join in, they can save up to $150 on their energy bill. Looks like you just made the team, rookie. Turn to cold with Tide. And that's the bottom line. It's got to be Tide. Energy savings based on average from switching from hot to cold and non-AG machines. Kessler Creative, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, has the print services you need for your business. Need large banners and signs for your next promotional event? How about vehicle wraps to advertise your company fleet? Find out for yourself how Kessler Creative can help you stand out from the competition with eye-catching designs that are sure to impress your customers. Kessler Creative, Jacksonville, Florida. Results-driven marketing and a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars fans, Corona Extra is giving you the chance to win big. 
Be one of three winners to receive a VIP game day experience complete with limo transportation, a Jacksonville staycation, and tickets to the Jaguars home game Sunday, November 28th. Enter for your chance to win at jaguars.com slash corona. Must be 21 years of age or older. See full rules for details. Please drink responsibly. Corona Extra Beer, imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. The station that the Jaguars listen to, 1010XL. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back to Jaguars Happy Hour on a Monday afternoon presented by Jet Home Loans. J.P. Shadrick with CBS Sports Senior Writer Pete Prisco. Busy schedule coming up at Daly's Place, Pete. What a, a couple weeks it's been already, the last uh, couple uh, a little bit of a breather here before October. They turn the calendar here in a few days. AJR October 1st, Brothers Osborne October 2nd, Suicide Boys October 3rd. Plenty of shows ahead uh, in the coming weeks in October. Tickets at dailysplace.com. And then October 5th, the Furick Foundation concert featuring Darius Rucker. Furickandfriends.com for tickets to the concert and the uh, golf tournament coming up. For Jim am I am I old or I, I'm not? I know who Darius Rucker is. I'm not sure I know the rest of them. I, I could tell you, brothers Osborne is kind of country. Um, okay, their, their brother is named Osborne. Uh, well, I figure that out. They're musicians. Who, who are the, I've heard of the Suicide Boys, but I don't know. I don't know who that is. Yeah, I, I'm not and, sure who those guys are. And what's AJR? I don't know. I, I have no idea. So you're old too, then, JP? I apparently so. Yeah, I, last okay. week I went to two last week, Pete Santana, which was fantastic. He's I bet that was awesome. I he bet was that great. was awesome. I had seen him once in a smaller kind of a festival setting, and he was an hour and fifteen minutes, and they had to get off the stage. He did all the hits. It was all the old stuff. He played for two hours and ten minutes straight without a break. It was outstanding. I bet that was. I bet that was fantastic. And then yeah. Counting Crows a couple nights later, uh, and they were very. Yeah, good they're too. okay. They're okay to me. Who's your like um, mid nineties? You know, was probably right in your wheelhouse, Pete. What did you listen mid-90s? to? Mid nineties, you got to oh. go back a couple <laughs> decades, dude. I mean, I, I I'm an Earth, Wind, and Fire guy. Oh. I, I I love the old. I, I mean, I've seen uh, Journey now without Steve Perry, but the guy's very good at singing. I, I like all that old rock stuff and Eagles. Um, How many Eagles know, are left? But, like Don Henley and like two others, right? Everybody else is gone, right? Yeah, Timothy Schmidt, the guitar player, is still there. Yeah, they they got them. They're still there. Uh, the Eagles was one of the best shows I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen U two. I've seen Elton John. I you know I've, but I'm not the new stuff is I I don't pay attention to it that much. <laughs> right. Well, we need to get you back up here and get Buscelli to get the couch one night when we get like Alice Cooper's He's, coming in a few weeks. Let's all go to Alice he, Cooper. Alice Cooper. Yeah, why not? Like schools out for yeah, summer? absolutely. Ace Freely's <laughs> yeah, opening, uh, playing with him from Kiss. Come on, nah, that's not one of my. That's not my cup of tea either. That's not, you said. It's, that's right at the same time. No, frame. not what Alice, are you talking about? Get me, get me some uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire or um, <laughs> Cool in the Gang. Okay, okay, you're that. That's more of your scene, not the the hard rock. Got it. No. Okay. No. 18 in a row, Pete. It, it is so painful to think about that. And Urban's going to get a lot of the national heat for this, especially this week on a Thursday night game coming up. Right? It's not his fault. I mean, they he inherited a no, team. No, the three that of lost, them are his. Th- three. The last three are, but not the first 15 before that. Um, it's just, it's got to break at some point, right? If they, like I said earlier, if they just hold on to the ball, they're doing some other things okay. They're playing pretty good defense right now. They got a takeaway finally the other day. If they can hang on to the ball in the red zone, maybe they score some points, hit a field goal or two, you, you win a, a tight ball game. And then that might change the whole mindset of everybody in the building here. But, but okay, the Texans were awful on last Thursday, and they beat them. 
Yeah. I mean, I and I know they didn't have Tyrod Taylor. And it was but, week but, one, though, Pete. Like, you know how week one I is. Know, I don't know. know. I, just, I mean, I, let, look, if you want to look at it realistically, they showed improvement this past week. They were yes. better. I think and that's week all. to week they've Jimmy Johnson better. went one and 15 his first year with the Cowboys. So it, it's, it's a process. It's going to take time, but you can't be trading away Oof. a first round corner after. So what did he end up playing? Eleven games? There was it even as ten games? Isn't yeah, it? He didn't play yesterday, so so it's ten games. I'll tell you exactly here. I, it just doesn't I, look. And they're you know look maybe the kid doesn't love it or they had an issue with him or he they wanted him more committed yeah. or he didn't like them or whatever the reason. They played ten games, ten starts, ten so games. You don't trade. You don't trade a first round top 10 corner after 10 games you try and work it out with him the rest of the year at least and then it's not like somebody wowed you and said okay carolina desperate for a corner because they lost jc horn calls you and says we'll give you our first round pick or our second round pick and a later pick it that they got a, a tight end that is, is expendable because tommy tremble a rookie tight end is actually playing well mm-hmm. and a third round pick for a fifth round pick. I, I just didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't I don't like I don't like to trade at all. And and by the way, if they trade for Ian Thomas from Carolina, then that means they'll have gone Chris Mann Hurts, Ian Thomas, and Dan Arnold all Panther tight ends. So maybe they ought to make that deal. Just to complete the room again, huh? By the way, Chris Mann Hurts hasn't blocked as well as his reputation since he's been in Jacksonville. We'll That's a little him. bit of a yeah, a little bit of a thing. We'll get into that when we come back. I saw your tweet on that earlier today. Second hour of the program coming up. We'll go around the National Football League as well. Tony Baselli due back at 5.30. Set your alarms accordingly. And it's Jaguars Happy Hour, presented by Jet Home Loans on a Monday on the Jaguars Digital Network. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. This is Chantel Chark, wife of DJ Chark. Enter for your chance to win a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience with the Jaguars. Imagine being selected as a Jaguar for the day with prizes including a behind-the-scenes tour of the stadium, a personalized Jaguars jersey, club-level tickets to a Jaguars home game, and more. Look for details at Publix, where you can pick up all your game day needs, including Tide, Bounty, and Crest. Tackle everything in one stop. Available at Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. When it comes to water, choose our team, the winning team. Choose CGC Water Treatment. CGC Water Treatment works, and it works for DG, too. Former Jags QB, David Garrard. If you're not filtering your water, you are the filter. Don't be the filter. Discover the kinetical difference. Call CGC Water Treatment at 844-CGC-JAGS or visit cgcwater.com. CGC Water Treatment are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars and your local independent Connecticut dealers. It may be football season, but pests are in full force here in Jacksonville. That's why you need Kingfish Pest Control's $99 knockdown treatment. Kingfish Pest Control will safely eliminate spiders, ants, roaches, and more for just $99, backed by their 100% customer satisfaction guarantee. Kingfish Pest Control is family-owned with thousands of A-plus customer reviews. They're hands down the best pest control company in Metro Jacksonville and a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Let the pros tackle the pest in your home. Go to kingfishpest.com. That's kingfishpest.com. This is Ice-T, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Matty Ice. This is a cold call. I convinced NFL teams to turn to cold water washing with Tide. The NFL, your uniforms get dirty. Tide can handle it, even in cold. Plus, if fans join in, they can save up to $150 on their energy bill. Looks like you just made the team, rookie. Turn to cold with Tide. And that's the bottom line. It's got to be Tide. Energy savings based on average when switching from hot to cold and non-HE machines. Healthcare coverage for less? Yes. Now, because of the new healthcare stimulus, you can get better benefits, more coverage, and pay less with a Florida Blue plan. Claim your savings today. Visit floridablue.com slash get covered now. 
policies have limitations and exclusions. If you already had health insurance in 2021, speak with an agent to find out how changing plans could impact your deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums. Florida Blue and Health Options Incorporated, DBA Florida Blue, HMO, are independent licensees of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony, Jaguars Today, all Jaguars, all NFL, all the time. 10 to noon weekdays on 1010XL. The Bengals are playing very well. A big, huge win. Um, <clears throat> uh, they're playing at a high level. You know, we threw three quarters or, you know, you know, first game, nothing. Second game, we made it through a half that we're playing pretty well. Third game, we're getting. So we're just, you know, I'm looking for constant improvement. I'm looking for loyalty and, and faith in the locker room, which I have. Um, that's never wavered, um, and we, you know, no, I'm not taking anything away from uh, the Cardinals. We played well enough, and they don't make some mistakes. We could, we could have won that game. There's head coach Urban Meyer today in the post mortem of a Jaguars loss in Week Three, 31-19, the final. It's hour number two of Jaguars Happy Hour. My name's J.P. Shadrick. Pete Prisco alongside CBS Sports Senior Writer joining us from South Florida. Tony Baselli is out until 5.30-ish. We'll see if he uh, slides back in early or not. Uh, we'll get to your. Uh, we'll go around the league here in the uh, next segment coming up in just a little bit and recap some games. Hear some calls from around the league yesterday. And then when uh, Tony returns, we'll get your social media questions and, uh, um, you know, keeping it real by uh, Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. That's all coming up. In uh, this hour of the program today, Pete. So uh, there you have it. Urban Meyer, hey, we're JP, on to Cincinnati, Pete. Yes. Quick question for you. A quick, not a quick question, but a quick note. Uh, what is that? Urban Meyer has three losses now. And the last time he had three losses in the season was when he was 8-5 and five for the Gators in 2010, I think it was. That's right. They lost three in a row that year in Florida, yeah. And then he, he walked away after that season. He did, yes. Yeah. That's right. So I'm not saying he's going to walk away. I'm just saying that that was that year. But it's been a long time since he's had to deal with any type of losing. No. Um, yeah, you're right. And that was that's the last he doesn't, time. That's 11 years yeah. ago. That's 11 years ago. He doesn't strike ago. me as a good loser. Not that anybody's ever should be a good loser. Cause, uh, I mean, but why would you be? Yeah, you don't – I mean, that, like this right now should should not be – it's not fun. It's, it's not good. Uh, what's happening right now, and you, everybody should be salty about it and try to go out and, and, and get better and move past it and improve. He, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I was watching the game, and uh, and I haven't watched the TV replay. I watched the tape today, but I watched when I was watching the game in our studio yesterday in our green room. When the interception, when the pick six happened, is that not him on the sideline throwing his hands up? <laughs> <laughs> if you can, if you run the 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 end zone shot of the pick six, I'd have to go check I it think, out. I, I think you it. could see Urban Meyer going, "Oh we, no!" Or like we, throwing his hand. I wouldn't be shocked by that, right? I mean, he has emotions just like everybody else. Pete, he's not a robot. I, I, do you, and, and so I heard today on the I don't know, listening to some stuff from up there that he was uh, he could have vetoed the call, but he didn't. That's right. He said he, uh, after the game at least, in the post-game press conference, he said he kind of heard it come over the headset and didn't uh, didn't say no. So they went for it. But, hey, I mean, if they block it up, as we said earlier in the first hour, Pete, if they block the three-time All-Pro J.J. Watt, who's stunning inside, then it's a long play touchdown. In an ideal world, this is not the offense Urban Meyer's running. It had a little Which is more. What, it had a little more yesterday than in the first two yeah, weeks, though, Pete. Did. And I, 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 to be honest with you, I, we talked about that last week. He had to run a little more yeah, and do his own did. read. He did all that. And yeah, and there was actually a play at one point. I can't remember where it was. Where had Trevor pulled that he would have run for a touchdown easily. Mm. Um, but I just think I don't know. I the hire of Bevel is a weird one. Because his scheme and his scheme don't really mesh. So getting to the root of that is finding out where where that come from. Who got, recommended him? And you got Schottenheimer in there too in that mix. Don't forget about him. Well, they might have had pads cross at one point. Bevel 
did coach the Big Ten at one point. So maybe there's somebody you know, he was at Wisconsin, wasn't he? He might have some he played at Wisconsin. He played at Wisconsin with, back in the in the old days, but yeah. Yeah, I think he coached there. But I I, I don't know. There's just because it, usually these coaches hire guys that are recommended to them or they've met them across paths at some point. Like like but we talked about yeah. George George Warhop mm-hmm. and him back in their days at uh in Cincinnati. college at Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I just think, and one thing about George Warhop, we've had we've been critical of him at times. Line's playing okay. Are they? The, yeah. Not awful and not great, but okay. I thought Cam was good yesterday. Um, he did, you know, that's a good pass rusher he's playing against at Chandler Jones. He did a good job on him. Uh, AJ's had his moments where he hasn't been as good this year. I don't think. I think Linder struggled a little bit. Uh, you know, in. in and How so? so? I, I How so, Pete? In pass protection, he's had problems where guys they had problems with some stunts yesterday. That 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 I'll I'll say. And JJ Watt can be a pain because he shoots gaps and he doesn't th- do things the conventional way. And he had some where he came out like he, you know, you know, there was a play for the most part. He did Cam Robinson did a pretty good job on Chandler Jones. But remember, Chandler Jones knifed around him one time on a run play and tackled tackled the mm-hmm. walk for I a do loss. remember that. Yep. Um, yep. But I thought I think the line could be. A couple, you know, it takes a while, and, and it's this isn't just something that's going on with the Jaguars' offensive line play struggling because it's struggle across the board in this league because it takes time for these guys to kind of grow get grow together, mm-hmm. and they don't get the work they need in, in camp with pads and everything. So it's gonna the line play in the NFL is bad right now. Yeah, game play is but, about the only time you get a, a, a lot right. of pad work in, really. But I didn't think they were awful. I just think. Linder hasn't been as good, and that would be concerning to me in pass protection. The uh, and Cam Cam was terrible in the first game. He's okay and not great in the last two. Yeah, and I love AJ, but he's got to pick his play up. And and um, yeah, I just and Juwan Taylor was a little better yesterday. The uh, the running game overall, they I got James Robinson involved a bit more. Fifteen carries, eighty eight yards. That's a five point nine average. He had a twenty one yarder in there. He also scored a touchdown. He caught the ball six times in the passing game on six targets yesterday for forty six yards. So this this Jaguars running game, there were moments though where where Hyde would come in, and when Hyde's in there, Pete, that sounds like on social media the fans are all over. Why are you playing Hyde over Robinson? All this stuff. He's still getting five and a half a pop. Uh, Carlos High. It's, you got to have two. You got to have two. Right. Uh, you don't I need James Robinson Hyde. to carry the load like he did last year. That's why you got would, Hyde in here. No, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have Hyde getting more than five, four or five carries. That's it, though. And I'd probably still give James Robinson more carries. I, I think yesterday, once he got going, you could see him get into a rhythm. He's a, he's a quicker back than he was last year. You yeah, can see that. He said he's worked on that, Pete, and you know I don't know exactly how you know what he's done for that, but he's he made that a priority in this off season to maybe not the full top end speed. He might not always have that, but a little quickness, a little shiftiness. He, and we were talking to him. Uh, I had an event with him last week, uh, a virtual event. And we were talking about his ability to avoid maybe not full contact, right? He just a little shift. He gets uh, you know little in a, a crease and doesn't take a direct hit often, and that's that's important. He, and he exploded out of his runs a little bit yesterday. You yeah. know, I, I I like what I saw from him. I really do. And it, you know, sixteen carries in the first two games was not enough. It just wasn't. And so I think that's something they got to lean on more and more. Uh, I was just thinking about that yesterday when I was watching the game. How if I would and, and I know the locker room's not open after games, right? It's That's not. Right. It, and, That's right. But if it were, I was just thinking about how I would have gone in there back in the day and gone over to James Robinson and said, "Hey, James, those, you know, you get the carries and you put put up the numbers," and he would have probably said, "Yeah, I need to get more carries." Or, I, "Yeah, give me those carries and I'll get you the numbers." And There's I would have had headline. my story. <laughs> There's the headline <laughs> right there. Robinson says he wants yeah. to touch the ball more. Oh. God. It's like one day with Fred Taylor. I said, "Fred, you think I think you can get to two thousand? You think you can get to two thousand? Fred goes, "Oh, I think I get to two thousand this year." I had a headline: Fred headline. Taylor, I get to two thousand this year. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's good beat work. It's easy. Um, but uh, I, I, yeah, I just, I. So the locker room isn't open at all, JP, after the game. No. So not for anybody. Just I think it's just the team. Not that I know of. There. Yeah, I think it's it's very limited, and uh, I know I'm not in that group. 
And I'm on post I would, game anyway. I'd, I wouldn't I'd have a hard time covering a team this year if yeah. I was the beat guy. And I know the, I, I know I know the guys up there, you know, D Rock and Mark Long and and those guys. It, it's it'd be hard to because you can't and this is a young team, so you don't have like veterans you can lean on. You can't develop re- relationships. Mm-hmm. And that was the whole thing of covering a team is developing relationships. Like I can only imagine if the locker room were open, the stories that would be coming out of that locker room. Because speaking from firsthand experience, when I covered Coughlin in the early years, the players had stories for me every single day. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And so there would be stories about Urban every single day. Uh, don't have any doubt. They're, like Coughlin, going his way around the NFL and finding out that these are grown men and he's got to learn that. And until he learns that, until he learns that, it's going to be a disconnect with his players. And, and they can say all they want about rah, 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 sis, boom, bah, win one for the varsity sweatshirt or whatever. That doesn't play in the NFL. <laughs> and so I think until he – and he will learn it because he's a smart man. He's a smart sure. football coach. Yeah. Well, he so he'll that. learn it. He'll figure it out. I, I, I just know he'll figure it out. I don't, I don't have any doubt that he'll figure it out because he's won too many football games – not to figure out how to win games. The stuff that you prioritize in college isn't what you prioritize in the NFL. And when he figures that out, and it might be this week, it might be five weeks from now, it might be after the season's over, he'll become a good NFL coach. But, you know, playing for the coach, no, that's not in the NFL. You respect the coach, you try and let him guide you in the right direction, but you're not mm-hmm. playing for the coach. We know what they're playing for. Then any coach who pretends that that's not what they're playing for is misguided. You money. want your players to respect you, and you have to respect them. Mm-hmm. But you're as man to man, not man to college 17-year-old. And that, I think, is where the disconnect is right now with Urban. But it's all it's all he's ever known. So. You know, that's the and he's way a he's smart man that's and a right. smart coach. He'll figure it out. Yeah, it's just a matter of fans in Jacksonville don't want to sit here and watch him figure it out. Like for example, this C.J. Henderson thing has just reeks of it. Like he didn't want to do what he didn't want. Like it just to me, and this is me guessing. Some of the things I've he C.J. Henderson didn't want to do what Urban wanted him to do, and I get it. You're the coach. But there might have been a way. Like, there was an incident where he rode the bike, I heard, where he was riding the bike during a practice, and C.J. Henderson felt embarrassed by it or, at one point. Where did you hear that, Pete? I just heard that through the grapevine. <laughs> and, and so when that stuff happens, Coughlin used to embarrass players all the time. All the time. Times 500 what Urban has done. But... Eventually, he weeded out the guys, and so maybe this is just the start of the weed-out process. I just wouldn't weed out a first-round pick 10 games into his career. i try and figure it out. And, and by the way, if he doesn't love football, there's no fixing him. And you do hear stuff that maybe he doesn't love the game, and you can't fix him. Well, and if that's the case, then but they, got, they, they, they got a tight end and a third-round pick for him. Okay, they got, a, they got a journeyman tight end and a third-round pick for a guy who was drafted in the top 10 after 10 games. Right. It's but not that, a good trade. The point is, okay, if he doesn't love it and you know it and they know it, then maybe, okay. Well, did he play any worse than the guys who do love it on that field since he's been when he was on the field the last this year? No. He's only played twice. Here, here's what you notice about C.J. Henderson, and I go back to a preseason game when he didn't play for a while and they mm-hmm. came back and he made a really nice play in the preseason in the middle of the field. He batted a ball away. There wasn't a bit of emotion. Not one bit. Now, somebody tweeted at uh, me and you, I think, on here and said that Shaquille Griffin and, and um, I think it was Rayshon Jenkins talked today and it sounded like they didn't Really, you know, sometimes you'd say, oh, if a guy – because I've been around guys get cut. and Hell, I remember when Andre Risen got cut and they, he never left the locker room. They sat around him and, <laughs> and, and before he – so guys respect players. They'll, yeah. they'll defend them. And, it, and, and I don't know this, so I'm just putting this out there with somebody said on the tweet that maybe they weren't so 
broken up by the fact that he's not there. I just listened, and I, I didn't catch all that live. I went back and listened to some of Rayshon Jenkins' uh, comments on it. And, you know, the, the question was more about, it seemed to me at least, you know, the communication. Was there distance? Was there something like that? And, and, and how do you deal or how do you get a player involved in your group? And he said, well, we, we're happy with the group we have. And, you know, sometimes there's a different ways to communicate with different so, players like and that kind of thing. According to the tweet, though, JP, it said he was. They said different. He was I'm different. Just, that was part. Of, that's where I was going. So there was part of that. Sometimes you have a a different way to communicate with somebody who might hear it differently. That's kind of how I perceive the quote from Rayshon Jenkins. I don't think he was calling him. Oh, this guy's different. Get him out of here. I didn't see it like that. No, but, but that's you the can quote. Read between the that's lines the headline, from, right? That's yeah. going to be the headline that's out there because of that little. No, you can read up. between the lines when a guy's talking to you yeah. and figure it out. Rayshon Jenkins is a self-made player who got himself a fat contract by working hard. He is a captain of that team. And if you have a corner who has top 10 ability and he's letting it rot because he's not in love with the game or putting in the time and the right work to do it. No time. For then that. you don't have, you don't want to deal with that. Nope. nope. I mean, you've been around people, you work with people that they skate by and you're like, what are you doing? You know, they want it now. They want all the trappings of it, but they don't work at it. That that's, that to me is one of the most frustrating things in life. Go do you do you. And if you're Rayshon Jenkins and he did what he did and he made himself into a big money player by working his butt off and he and he's respected in that locker room, of course you're gonna be put off by the guy who doesn't. It's not a problem anymore. He's now a Carolina Panther. We are back in a moment. We'll go around the National Football League, get into some of the games yesterday. There were some really good ones around the NFL. This was one of them, by the way. There were a lot of things that happened in this game. It didn't turn out the right way, unfortunately, for the Jags. We'll go around the NFL also at about 5.30 or so, maybe. We'll see if Tony Baselli returns for the uh, stretch run of the program today. Secure the best seat to the best price. Become a Jaguars season ticket member today. Visit jaguars.com slash tickets or call 904-633-2000. Yes, season tickets are still available for the Jaguars this year. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com you expect Jags fans to say, Duval! You expect the beer stadium is going to be cold, the dogs will be hot, but what you don't expect is an airport hotel with a renovated inviting lobby, a cool bar, and crowded restaurant, or 10,000 square feet of space just waiting for your next family or business event. At the Crown Plaza Jacksonville Airport, you should always expect to be surprised. Book online or call 1-877-2-CROWN. That's one 877 227-6963. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 44 years straight. Built for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30 plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single family homes or maintenance free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, Call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. This is Ice-T. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Matty Ice. This is a cold call. I convinced NFL teams to turn to cold water washing with Tide. The NFL, your uniforms get dirty. Tide can handle it, even in cold. Plus, if fans join in, they can save up to $150 on their energy bill. Looks like you just made the team. Rookie. 
turn to cold with Tide. And that's the bottom line. It's got to be Tide. Energy savings based on average from switching from hot to cold and non-HE machines. I'm Urban Meyer, head football coach of the Jacksonville Jaguar. New Horizons call for renewed vision, enhanced clarity, and an unparalleled willingness to block out the noise and distractions around you and simply focus on achieving greatness. Because getting one step closer to defining everyone's expectations isn't just about waiting for a window of opportunity. It's about creating it for yourself. It's about being a game changer, both on and off the field. And when we say we're all about renewal and achievement in Jacksonville, we mean it. That's why we've chosen to partner with Renewal by Anderson, official window and door replacement company of the Jacksonville Jaguars. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on a Monday afternoon. Glad you're along with us after a Jaguars loss in Week 3. J.P. Shadrick with Pete Prisco, Tony Vaselli due back at 5.30, so... You now the ratings. What do you what do you think continues. the chances are he's back at five thirty? You taking the over or the under? Uh, he's go, it's going to be after five thirty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You might be right. We will uh, find out in about oh ten minutes or so. A little less okay. than that. What 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 is the better chance of happening? The Jaguars not getting the streak or Baselli being here before five thirty? See, that's not even right, Pete. Come on. <laughs> yeah, pick Come one. on, Pete. Pick one. You know Pete, they're going to win a game. Okay, then you think Baselli's going to be here before 5.30. <laughs> the, the, all I'm saying is the Jaguars will win a game before they break the record. Yeah, I, I think we, I think we're there's a better chance that they win a game than Baselli gets there before 5.30. Yeah, That's, I, it, I'm, a, I'm in agreement with you on that Thank one. you very much. Thank you. Let's I don't, go. I, and I don't think they're going to win a game, but I don't think he's going to be there before 5.30 <laughs> either. It's what it is. Uh, let's go around the National Football League and hit on some of the games yesterday. The Bills, what a day for Josh Allen. 43-21, the win over Washington. Yeah, and that Washington defense, I thought it was going to be dominant. Jack Del Rio, what the hell's wrong with that defense? They have a four-man rush with Sweat and Young on the edges and Allen and Payne on the inside. They draft the first-round linebacker who's a good player. And they can't stop anybody. Can't do anything. It's incredible. Can't do anything. They've given up 30 points in two games this year. They give up 30 twice all year. It's incredible. Or the, three games this year. Yeah, Bay, uh, the Cleveland Browns over the Bears, 26-6. to six. Fields might be hurt now for the Bears, and all three guys are you know, possibly starting for the Bears this week coming up. Yeah, and I, I heard his hand wasn't that bad, so he'll probably play, but they didn't do him any favors, JP. It was bad. That poor kid was brutalized. You you would think they would get him outside the pocket, move him around a little bit, uh, use his legs. They did none of it. He stood back there and got, he, they got sacked nine times, nine. Wow. And he was hit a bunch more. He was brutalized. He, it was terrible. The rookie quarterbacks are one and ten, I think. It, no, oh. Yeah, one and oh. ten starting. Oof. Nine times. Is that right? Is that that sounds right, right to me. It well, sounds right. 0 and 3 for Lawrence, 0 and 3 for Wilson, Six. 0 and 1 for Mills, 7. That's 7. 0 and 1 for Fields, that's 8. eight. And 1 and 2 for Mac Jones. So yeah. 1 and 10. 1 and 10 is not good. The Ravens over the Lions 1917, the last second field goal call from Dan Miller on the Lions radio network on the losing end. Tucker's ready. There's the snap. Spot down. Kick on the way. It is up and it is off the crossbar and through. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Justin Tucker from 66 hit the crossbar and it bounced through. And the Ravens are celebrating on the field. The longest field goal in the history of the NFL has just beaten the Detroit Lions. It's a heck of a call on the losing end by Dan Miller there, Pete, and 66. How about it? Well, a couple things. They completed a fourth and 19 pass in that drive <laughs> and from their own end. Should never have happened. They had a delay of game. They shouldn't have had the kick. It should have moved back five yards. He never makes it. And they, there was a grounding, I thought, that they didn't get called. I don't know what Lamar Jackson was doing on the play. He threw it out of bounds, but he was in the pocket. And so 
they got away with one the Ravens. It feel bad for the Lions, but I'm going to give Dan Campbell credit. That team plays hard, and they play through all the way to the end. And you can see they're they're doing things that they're not. They they have no talent, barely any talent, and they're playing hard. I give them credit for that. Your guy, Justin Herbert, four touchdown passes yesterday. The Chargers over the Chiefs, thirty to twenty four. Okay, Trevor Lawrence will be a star. I have no doubt about that. I just watched some of the throws he makes, and I can understand and see it. You can see it. But the Jaguars could have picked Justin Herbert Mm. instead of they could have traded up with nine and the two picks and gone to get Herbert, and they didn't. Yeah. We could play this game in a lot of drafts, Pete, though. But but you could have. Could have had Russell Wilson. Could have had Ben Roethlisberger. I know, but... But they were in a position with two first-round picks to go make the move. It's not often that you're in that position. So, but yeah, the kid's special. There is, there is something, and, and Trevor Lawrence has a lot of the same things. You can just watch it and see it. The, like I said, the throw in the end zone yesterday that Lawrence made the chart. Few people on the planet can make that. Yep. Justin Herbert's the same kind of guy. Few people can do what he does. And, and nothing phases them. That was fantastic. That was a great game. And Mahomes, they turned the ball over three times. Yeah, they did. You can't win that. You can't win turning it over like that. Sounds like Andy Reid is okay as well, which is good news. Thank uh, God. For the, good man, Andy Reid. Uh, Saints over the Patriots 28-13. And Jameis had a couple of touchdown passes. Quickly here, Pete. Yeah, and uh, that one surprised me a little bit because of everything. Sean Payton's good in that role. We're not supposed to win. People think we're done. We're on the road. Three straight games. Look what we did. And they made Mac Jones look ordinary. Mac Jones, the, the we got to slow the hype train on Mac Jones a little bit, too. Mm. Mm. The Mac Jones hype train is coming to a stop. The uh, Falcons over the Giants, boring game, 17-14. Uh, so we'll move along to the Bengals and the Steelers, and the Bengals just beat the heck out of these guys. And, and just dominated them. Just dominated them physically up front. And, you know, Logan Wilson, the linebacker, is a real, keep an eye on him this week. He's a good player. I loved him coming out. Um, he was one of my favorite guys in the draft, and he's starting to develop into a real quality linebacker. That's that's an interesting team with a lot of young players. Yeah. The uh, Titans with a big win over the Colts in the division, 25-16. Derrick Henry goes for 113. Tannehill throws three touchdown passes. They are in control of the South with back-to-back wins now. Broncos, <clears throat> excuse me, Broncos blank the Jets, P 26-zip. What in the world is that? The Jets are the worst team in the league. Jacksonville nope. might be on the longest losing streak of all, but the Jets are the worst team. They stink. They're bad. They're young, but they're bad. On to the Raiders in overtime against the Dolphins. Brent Musburger, the great with a call on Raiders radio of the game winner. Good snap. Good hold. Jackpot, baby! The Raiders become the first team in history of the NFL to win their first three games against teams that all won at least 10 games the previous season. 31-28. Bring on the Chargers. That's Brent Musburger, of course. You believe in the Raiders, Pete? I'm starting to. And let's give uh, former Jaguar head coach Gus Bradley some credit because he's taken the defense that was a disaster a year ago and he's made it into a decent unit right now. They're not good yet, but he's made them into a decent unit, and they were far from that last year. So uh, we'll know more about them this week, though. Isn't it funny, JP? Tom Brady plays at New England, and everybody's raving about the biggest game of the year, biggest game ever, regular season game. It's not even one of the three best games of the weekend this weekend. Yeah, I mean, this one coming Arizona for the Raiders the is huge. Arizona right. and the Rams. Yeah. Chargers, Chargers and, uh, and Raiders, Raiders. Broncos and Ravens. It's, it's not even in the top three. It's huge. Now, of course, it could be a historic evening because Tom Brady could set the all-time passing record as well in that game. So, well, he probably will. He only yeah. needs a couple 100, yards. 100 and something yards. Uh, moving along now, Rams over the Bucks, 34-24. What happened with the uh, Buccaneers? They got beat up. Their defense has had too many injuries on it right now. They're not very good on the back end. And and Matt Stafford outplayed Tom Brady. It's really that simple. Vikes over the Seahawks, 30-17. to 17. Your guy, your quarterback up there, um, Kirk Cousins, threw three touchdown passes, threw for 323 in the game. He was phenomenal. He was phenomenal. Uh, and I got to get him, because I criticize him, but he was outstanding. All Stood the in there, took shots, 
took shots, made throws. That offense is good. They didn't even have Dalvin Cook. And Madison had a big day, Alexander Madison. The Seahawks are bad on defense. Bad. Two weeks in a row where they looked terrible on defense. And then the game of the day, I thought, Pete, Packers over the 49ers. We go to Westwood 1. Ryan Radke had the call of a third down conversion and the game winner. Third and 10. Three receivers right, two to the left. Rodgers back to pass. He looks, he throws down the middle. Adams has it and goes down inside the 35. Ten seconds left. Packers try to get lined up. Seven seconds left. Rodgers goes under center at five seconds. Takes the snap. He spikes the football. Rodgers a pump of the fist. Wow. Crosby's coming out. A chance to win it. Wow. Crosby is ready. Here's the snap. Ball down. The kick is on the way. And it is... Good! Packers win! Mason Crosby <laughs> from 51! And the Green Bay Packers have stunned the San Francisco 49ers. They win it 30-28. to What a game. What a finish. Ryan Radke with a call on Westwood 1, and I think he summed it up pretty well at the end there, Pete. What a finish. Hey, I've never heard him call a game. Is he a new guy? He's pretty uh, good. He's been at it for a little while. He does a number of different sports for them. Uh, uh, he was actually in the Pacific Coast League when I was at the same time. And he does a bunch of Westwood One things still. He lives out in Reno still. Um, great guy. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I like job. it. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Um, that was a great game. The 49ers messed up the finish. They snapped the ball, their touchdown play, with 12 seconds on the play clock. Mm. And they had no timeouts left. There's no reason. To, they had all their timeouts. There's no reason to do that. They left too much time on the clock. Rodgers, unbelievable. And, and and by the way, Green Bay dominated most of that game. Dominated most of the game. There you have it. Our look around the National Football League. Coming up, allegedly, Tony Baselli will be back with I us. I won. I'm a winner. Yeah. I'm a winner. Barely. He didn't make He's, it. He moved left, Tony. Now get now you're in my it. shot. There he is. No, He's he coming back. It. He didn't make it. <laughs> He's a little late, but we will have Tony Vaselli, the pride of the Jaguars left tackle. He's back on set when we return. This is Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our scrubbing soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. At ViStar, we believe in better, especially in helping build a better financial future for our members. So we've reviewed our offerings from the ground up. We've lowered or eliminated over half our fees and enhanced our already competitive rates, saving members more than a million dollars this year, in addition to the millions we save them every year. If you believe that saving money is better, join ViStar. Visit ViStarCU.org. All loans subject to approval, insured by NCUA. It's time for sunshine and summer showers, so it's more important than ever to make sure you call Crystal Clean for all your waterproofing needs. Waterproofing can extend the life of your building by keeping water outside where it belongs. And that Florida sun can beat up your business's paint job. Crystal Clean's painting services can bring your building back to life. From waterproofing to painting, schedule Crystal Clean today. Call 904-220-3337 or go to crystalclean.com. You don't have to worry when it's Crystal Clean. This is Ice T. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Matty Ice. This is a cold call. I convinced NFL teams to turn to cold water washing with Tide. The NFL, your uniforms get dirty. Tide can handle it, even in cold. Plus, if fans join in, they can save up to $150 on their energy bill. Looks like you just made the team. 
Rookie, turn to cold with Tide. And that's the bottom line. It's got to be Tide. Energy savings based on average from switching from hot to cold and non-HE machines. Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. Jacksonville Sports Talk for Jacksonville sports fans. 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, it's called a whirly bird. So usually it's just like the whole line is just zoning. We're trying to sell a run on the front side and then the back side guy can get around to the end is scraping off the edge on the back side and try to, you know, give the quarterback some protection on the back side. That was intentional. Yeah, that he's supposed to and do it, that, yeah. And it's just the, the fact that J.J. Watt's J.J. Watt, right. meaning he got by in there? Oh, uh, yeah, because, you know, when you zone it like that, J.J. Watt's the guy, he doesn't really take on contact in the run game. So when he felt the run, he usually tried to jump around you or go the opposite direction, the direction you're going. So uh, that's just J.J. being J.J. That's Jawan Taylor earlier today in the aftermath of a Jaguars loss in week three, 31-19. The Cardinals a winner over the Jags. And welcome back. It's Jaguars happy hour. And it's time now for Keeping It Real, presented by Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. Open up a winner today. Real Ingredients, award-winning wine by Robert Mondavi. J.P. Shadrick, Pete Prisco, Tony Vaselli. The, uh, the topic today, gentlemen, how did the Jaguars' offensive line play yesterday? Um, overall, I thought they played well. I mean, they ran the ball well. I thought, I mean, a few too many hits. Um, I mean, Trevor took some shots. But overall, I thought they did a good job. I mean, I, Juwan's, Juwan Taylor's uh, explanation of the uh, flea flicker, I get what he's saying. But if I remember correctly, I'll have to go back and look again. I don't think there was a – edge threat they did have the tight end back there and somebody has to account for JJ like it's and again it's either Will Richardson or Andrew Norrell someone has to account for him I don't care like you can do the world whirly whirly bird whirly bird all you want um I get what he's saying and he's not wrong that someone can come off and take off edge pressure if there is edge pressure I didn't see any edge pressure um anyways that's neither here nor there the guy I want to call out specifically um is Cam Robinson I think Cam Robinson's had a really good year so far. Like, he got paid a bunch of money. Um, he was franchised. A lot of questions of what he would do. And he's playing good football. He's playing like a franchise left tackle. He played against a guy named you know Chandler Jones coming in, had five sacks against the Titans. I think he had two against the Vikings. Um, he had been a menace to society. <laughs> I mean, a menace to quarterbacks. And for the most part, he didn't do much. He had a, he had a couple hits, but they were on, they were on twists. Yep. Um, on games, he made uh, Cam had a bad run uh, block on that led to a tackle for a loss. Here's Chandler Jones' stat line, by the way: three tackles, one tackle for loss, three quarterback hits officially, one fumble recovery. Yeah, and so the quarterback hits on the most part. One, he got an edge late on Cam. Mm-hmm. The other really were two twists. And I watched three different tackles now, Cam being one of them, and Cam's the only guy who's really blocked them. And he, by the way, they didn't help him. He had one or two chips the whole game. I watched the tape. Cam Robinson's playing really good football. And if he continues to play this type of football, you're going to have to pay him. I watched the tape today, too, and I thought he, I said the same thing earlier, right, JP? I yep. said he played really well. I thought he handled them. The, you know, you mentioned the pressure, Tony. The one came on his stunt. That was on Norwell. Norwell didn't get I agree. to, get to yeah. the. Um, I, I thought the line as a whole was solid. I think Linder's pass protection has been a problem. Well, a you're looking bit. at the one where he, uh, JJ beat him early. Not just that. There were a couple others. They had, they seem to have problems with stunts. They, they, they didn't stunts. pick up this. They didn't pick up the stunts great. And I think the guy who's not who's probably to me that's standing out, and not playing as well, is AJ Can. Well, he's he's had a rough season. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's had a rough start where he played so well last year. He's had a rough start. But yeah. let's focus yeah. on the positive. Cam Robinson. That was my big question coming into the year. What would he? What would, and right now. He, I, I am rooting for him. I hope he stays healthy. He banged up his shoulder a little bit. He was able to come back in, which is great news. He plays like this for the rest of the year. He is going to get a big 
payday. A big. And if they don't pay him here, someone's going to pay him a lot of money because he can block people. Norwell got banged up a little bit too and went out and Barch went in for a while and got pushed around. Um, the the right tackle was a little bit better yesterday, I thought, than he was in the first The right games. tackle's biggest issue is he sets so dang deep he gives himself no margin for error and he gets pushed back sometimes. Like, I... I don't understand some of the techniques things he does, but yeah, he did play better. He did he did a good overall good job. Hey Tony, I got a question for you as a left tackle. Yes, because this was on. I saw this on Twitter, and I wanted to ask you, but I'll ask you on here since we're talking about the offensive <laughs> line. If there's a slide protection where to the left, and the tackle and the guard are supposed to slide to the gap, but there's no immediate threat to the tackle's left because there's no edges and coming. Is the tackle then responsible or partly responsible for the guy coming on the inside between him and the other guard? Well, you should, yeah. You understand I mean, what I'm saying? Yeah, you should. I mean, first of all, you don't go block air, so you should slide right. slow and use your body, keep your eyes outside okay. and use your body to give that guy nowhere to go and help your guard out. No different than you'd want help from your guard, you know, if right. a guy made an so inside that, move. Yeah, uh, because that's the way I saw it. And I was watching the Tunsil last week. There was a slide that you could tell they were sliding left, but there was no threat on the outside to Tunsil. And the guy came inside of him, but he didn't do a thing to prevent the guy from coming. And the Mr. Offensive Line on Twitter, who thinks he knows everything about the position, said, oh, no, that was on the guard because it was a slide protection. If there's no threat outside your left, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you blocking air? Why are you blocking air? Like, hey, help your buddy out. (laughs) And uh, T.J. You, Lang, you know T.J. Lang played in the league, and he said, look, I'm going to differ with you guys here. Maybe that's the way the protection is planned, but there was no threat. And he's got to immediately yes, deal TJ, with the threat. T.J.'s right. In. I mean, it's like, first Lock of all, somebody. if I was the offensive line coach, I'd be ripping the left tackle. Like, what are you doing? Why? Are you, and then I'd rip the left guard for getting beat. But, like, <laughs> why are you leaving the guy out hanging out the dry? Because guess what your job – hey, Pete, guess what your job at the end of the day is as an offensive line? Block. <laughs> block and protect the quarterback. Like, this yeah. isn't about personal glory. Like, go out there and block nobody. And, and you know, I, I, I have to bite my tongue because I keep on almost saying a bad word about oh, really? your buddy. <laughs> like, well, there should be a saying, don't blank your buddy. Um, right. <laughs> so I'm, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so I'm trying but to I, say. I, I know I can always get the – I mean, you played the position. I, you played it at the highest level. I know I can get the answer from you. If there's a slide protection and you're supposed to slide to the left, the line slide to the left, and there's nobody there, you got to block the guy. Well, and inside. Pete, the only reason I know that is because we never actually slid in Tom's offense, who's always one-on-one, so I had to talk to right. somebody else who actually <laughs> got the benefit of playing the slide protection. <laughs> <laughs> D- Tony, do you ever have the whirly bird? Um, yes, in the sense like uh, you like it was a different whirly bird where you'd like go inside and like whirly bird around the end and come back when you could do this crack black uh, crack uh, block back on back, him uh, the on the way. reverse. Mm. Wow! But yeah, and I I don't remember if there was a threat. On the edge, there was. Play. I'm almost if, positive, Pete, because I watched it this morning, and I'm just yeah, I did too, and I don't remember if there was. I don't think there was any me. threat. I don't know but, why. But I don't again, know where he was whirly birding to. Again, though, if your your assignment is the whirly bird, and there's a threat immediately in your face, you can't let you him go. Adjust your, you got to adjust your assignment. Well, yes, like have the tackle whirly bird, and you block the eighth gap. Right, right, right. Like you always JJ block. came crashing. JJ, yeah. <laughs> Will Richardson never couldn't touch him. He came crashing in. Norwell had to block him. Yeah. It, it, first of all, him. like you got to block like like inside out. Like the threat is inside. And like you know, like think, like think, <laughs> <laughs> like okay. Well, here, if I whirly bird and get a, like a check mark on my assignment, but JJ Watt comes up and hits the guy in the mouth, <laughs> that's a demerit. <laughs> like, is that okay? Right. Yeah. Here's what I want to ask you about that, because you you, if you have a trick play like that, how many times in a week are you practicing that? Couple. You can't take all day. I mean, practices three? aren't that well, I mean, long. The line Pete. has to like for that exact reason. The line has to work on it a couple different ways. Well, you should talk about it. First of all, it's not that hard. Like you should be going over in the meeting. Like here's the look. This is what we're gonna get. This is what we expect. But if you don't, you know. Yeah, you gotta protect. You gotta protect the gate inside gap. I mean, it's just you gotta talk through it. 
And more than anything, it's so not like, it's, a, it's, not like so a hard, it's not like a hard play to execute. So how many times do you actually practice it on the field? A couple. I just said. I just in. answered the question, Pete. I said a couple. Two is a couple. Two or three? Yeah, no, a couple. No, a few a is three. Well, yeah. A couple like, is literally two. A single is one. Couple is two. Few is three. Several is so one. You're saying it's only two. So just right? say two. <laughs> is that, that, is that, that, am I right? Said, Thank you. You finally said something right, Tony. Practice it twice. Oh, uh, whatever. Just shut up, Pete. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, there you we have got, it. We got to do uh, uh, social questions. We're going to do I, that. Since I screwed up the uh, timing of the show tonight. When we come back. You sure uh, that, playing golf. Yeah. It's yeah a bit- I went and got a quick nine in the <laughs> hour. Got, got nine. <laughs> I went and played putt-putt. It was a putt-putt course across the street. <laughs> That was Keeping It Real, presented by Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. Open up a winner today. Real Ingredients, award-winning wine by Robert Mondavi. We'll wrap up the show with social media questions, and they were pouring in today. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. This is Ice-T, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Matty Ice. This is a cold call. I convinced NFL teams to turn to cold water washing with Tide. The NFL, your uniforms get dirty. Tide can handle it, even in cold. Plus, if fans join in, they can save up to $150 on their energy bill. Looks like you just made the team, rookie. Turn to cold with Tide. And that's the bottom line. It's got to be Tide. Energy savings based on average when switching from hot to cold and non aging machines. The Land Rover Defender story began with the simple thought of creating an exceptionally capable off-road vehicle, becoming the go-anywhere, do-anything, all-terrain machine. Today, there's a new Land Rover Defender, the toughest and most advanced Land Rover vehicle ever. From the beginning, Land Rover knew the new Defender was capable of great things. Motor Trend's 2021 SUV of the year is just the latest example. Test drive the new Land Rover Defender today at Land Rover Jacksonville on Atlantic Boulevard or go to LandRoverJacksonville.com. Land Rover, above and beyond. Hi folks, Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern Pit Barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Hey, Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field and valet park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent, sponsored by Alert Today Florida, near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty Zencog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secured during the game. When the game's over, return your claim ticket and pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, Alert Today, alive tomorrow, because safety doesn't happen by accident. I'm Chantelle Chark, wife of DJ Chark. My husband is always prepared with the game day plan, and so am I. I'm always looking for easy ways to save time, and Publix helps me tackle everything from pre-game prep to post-game cleanup with prices that are never out of bounds. This week at Publix, Dawn 16.2 and 19.4 ounce sizes are on sale for $2.79. Available at Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. The station that the Jaguars listen to, 1010XL. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. Jaguars happy hour coming down the home stretch on a Monday afternoon. J.P. Shadrick, Pete Prisco, Tony Baselli has chosen to join us again. <laughs> Let's get to social media questions as we wrap up the show today and move on to Cincinnati. And question number one in the mailbag today at mmore 13 underscore 2 Agree or disagree? Joe Cullen is getting as much out of this collection of defensive talent as possible. Pete? Well, yes, Sunday he did. 
Um, they still got to rush the passer better. It, it, somehow, some way, they got to figure that out. Yeah, I, I, I disagree with you, Pete. I think, you know, take away the first game. I, I don't think they were good in Houston. They weren't organized. They didn't seem like on the same page. The whole team wasn't. Yeah, I mean, so, right. I mean, like. It was the fourth preseason game. I think in Denver they gave up 23 points. They played a little bend, but don't break. I mean, kept good red zone defense, forced field goals. They gave up 24 points against one of the high, most high-powered offenses in the NFL. Um, they were great on third down. They were great on third great down. Great on yeah. third down. One I think nine, Joe yeah. Cohen, the last two weeks, and his staff and this team have done a great job. Yes, they don't have a great pass rusher. They don't. I mean, I think Josh Allen, if he had a little bit of help with someone else, maybe he could develop, you know, have a better chance. I mean, he had some nice rushes. I think he got held. It should have been a safety. On the first one, when he beat uh, DJ Humphreys inside, and he got about tackled. And the, I don't know how the official missed it. Um, so I think Joe Cullen, I give him an A the last two weeks on defense and what he's what what they're doing and how they're slowing teams down. Okay, right, while well, you give it out grades, why don't you give a grade to the offensive staff? I got to give it uh, <laughs> a C. I got to give a C minus, D plus because You're, yeah, when you I score agree. twenty points in two games in today's NFL, that's not very good. How about special teams? Yeah, great. Uh, I give a? it a uh, – Well, you can't give it an A because the kicker stinks. I give an F for our kicker. Okay. I give an A for our return team. Yeah. And I give an A Tony, for our punter. Yeah. When you were gone, they announced that they signed the kicker to the practice squad. Yeah. I, I, so I, is that, I figured is they, that the end of Lambeau? I think, I think they try to get through Thursday night and then make a call. That's my sense. What, if, he comes in, if he comes in the next two days and bangs the ball around, I'd get rid of him now. I would too, probably, but I'm saying, but that's, I mean, the Brahma's is a practice squad. It's just such a short week. So I mean, you can look at them, though. That's so you can look at them. Yeah, I'd look at them all week, and then my guess is I'd probably make the change after Thursday night and just say, time to make a change. Or if, you know, something happens on the practice field and Lambeau keeps missing them on the practice oh, yeah. or something. But then... How often are you out on the practice field? Now, unless you're going to have, like, right. special kicking practices. Right, right. And they're out, uh, actually, on the practice field right now, I believe. They're indoors tonight, but uh, they're working at night. Lambeau, Lambeau makes a pretty penny. I think north of four. It's it healthy. makes a pretty penny to be yanking balls all over the place. He is, I mean, only team in the NFL not to make a field goal this year. And I gotta believe we're probably leading and missed extra points by this time. I would not doubt to, that. Not to chuckle. Yeah, I'm, it's not I'm, that funny. I'm, I have no patience for kickers because I think there's a million of them out there. Once they get into a groove, and we've seen that play out. J Jason Myers is first and foremost. Matt Gay, I mentioned it earlier. So if my guy misses a couple in two consecutive games, guy bye. Kickers and running backs not. Uh, high on Pete's priorities. Uh, let's move along. No, get pass rushers and cornerback. Just don't trade them away after 10 games. Thank you, Pete. Let's move along <laughs> Whoa, to our next shot question. <laughs> question number two. Uh, at Sickwood at 98, what trade or free agent signing can this team make this year in the offseason to help Lawrence, or do we have to wait three years while they try to draft and develop because his weapons stink? That's aggressive. Well, I mean – I'll say this. I, offensively, you got to address. I, I, I hesitate to do this because it's not. But I'll say, let me say it this way. And I'm not saying, and it's not fair to ETN. I'm not saying he was a bad pair. I don't even want to have that discussion. He's hurt. Yeah. But I watched the tape, and he didn't do much against us except for one punt return. But Rondell Moore, the number four for the Arizona, um, the first two weeks, and especially against the Vikings, is like, I'm watching him on the field. I'm like, holy cow, who is this? I had to go look up. One, I just started watching the tape with no roster. Mm -hmm. I watched four. I'm like, who's this little guy? Who's this guy? Yeah, he's like 5'7", running and, around. Like, you need that. It's like Pete size, running around. You need around. to get speed on I the field. I love Rondell And it's more. not just straight line speed. Yeah. You have to get make you miss speed on the field. That's first thing. Second thing, you yeah. have to get a tight end. A tight You need to get someone who can control well, the middle of the field. Huh? <laughs> they just traded for one. Okay, you need to get a tight end that's dynamic and can, you know, stretch the field, play the uh, challenge in the middle of the yeah, field. Yeah, but how many are there, Tony? How many in are the NFL? There? How many? Okay. Where, where are the dynamic tight ends? Kelsey? Travis Kelsey, Gronk, Kittle, OJ Howard, Kittle. OJ Howard, he didn't barely even play. He hasn't played. Kittle, but, no, but you're telling me I, Waller. O.J. Howard is a – I watched he's, him make catches yesterday. He's finally back on the field. It's been a while. I'm just saying, yeah, but you Waller. asked me. That's the type of play. Waller, Kittle. They're all later uh, round picks, though. Janu Smith, Henry, uh, Hunter Henry. Like, 
Keep. I mean, there's how many first there's round picks are there? I'm, I'm not talking about picks. Go get a guy. You. I'm just telling you. Hey, what okay, they need is how about this? T.J. Hawkinson, Henry Ruggs. How about T.J. Hawkinson? Ruggs. Yeah, there's one. They need Henry Ruggs. T.J. Hawkinson. I'll take T.J. Hawkinson. I've watched him a couple games now, and he's that kid can play. So it's how about Noah? I mean, go get like a Noah. You need Noah somebody. Fan. I agree. But they need speed more than that. Okay, how about this? Mark Andrews from Baltimore. You take him right now? Yeah. Speed. Speed. They I need just speed. Said, more what than was anything. the first thing I said? Right. You would agree, though. Speed is first and foremost. Speed and then a tight end. Speed. You uh, need talent. You need weapons. But you can't do that now. It's an off season issue. I know. Can't There's nothing. That. There's no help coming this year. No. That's what it is. Uh, question number three on social media today. At Duval43, the blatant disregard for Trevor's growth astounds me. Calling flea flickers when you're leading in your own territory <laughs> has to be the dumbest call I've seen in years. They were running the ball at will. The game was over after that. Thoughts on play calling? <laughs> Question mark. Okay, the game was not over after that. There was still a one possession game. Correct. But the momentum was. Come on. Go, yeah, find, that was... go beat back, Mo. They went three and out after that. Well, that's not my problem. It is our problem. Yes, go, it was. In go, fact, go, our problem. Go beat back Mo. The problem was they went three and out, and that was our problem. I know, yes. but like, that doesn't mean you have to go three and out after a bad play. Like Teams all the time recover from a bad play. Here's what happened in the next drive for the Jaguars, by the way. Uh, Hyde up the middle, four yards. Uh, Lawrence pass incomplete, short left. Lawrence pass short middle to Jones for 10 yards. Penalty, offensive P.I., Third and 16, Lawrence scrambles for 10, punt team. I thought that offensive P.I. was like the one that was called on Arizona was obvious. I mean, Williams, the tight end, like leaned into him. But if you watch the, the P.I. offensive pass interference on the Jaguars, they're just running crossing routes. The DB ran into the our tight end. Uh, man, uh, what's his name? Uh, man Hurts. Man Hurts. Chris Man Hurts. Chris Man Hurts. I did not – like, that was a call, Pete, you see all the time not called. If you're just crossing and running into each other, that's not a penalty. Tony, uh, one thing you mentioned, Man Hurts. Um, not blocking as well as expected. No. But you didn't answer my question Weird. about the crosser. <laughs> why is that? No, I, I agree. That was not a pass interference. No. Why is, call? Why so, is he, why is if not the officials didn't screw up the goal, I was right. You didn't have to go three and out. Why is Man Hurts not, four and out why is Man the Hurts not playing as well? Well, you have to ask him. Not you blocking. Go? He's not blocking as well. He's been he that he was brought in to be a mauler in the run game. All right, let's and go back. The other let's side get more questions. Is, I don't want to talk about. It. Let's get more questions. And the other side ends. Of, and the other side ends. Three minutes. Block hey, better. Pete, be quiet. I want to hear another <laughs> fan question. Then we got to hear. You JP's. were here all damn day. You would have heard. A lot yeah. Of stuff. Welcome back to the show. We got to hear JP's Monday night read. And I don't want you interrupting him again let's, like you did last week. Let's get one more question in then. Uh, at Noman Muhammad twelve. Why would we trade C.J. Henderson for a guy we could have brought in during the offseason? <laughs> well, yeah. Urban Meyer said that today. They were looking at him in free agency. Well, then if you wanted him, why don't you go pay him? Yeah, he was with Carolina. They, uh, But why trade him for anything when you get 10 games in? Yeah, I, games. I, it's, it's really quick to give up on a top 10 pick who has a ton of talent. Now, that tells me that there were such bad off-the-field issues that they th thought he is. there's no hope. I mean that's well, basically maybe his, dad, maybe his dad told Urban he wanted the house. <laughs> but Pete, would you agree with me? I mean, if you trade a top ten pick after ten games and not even a year and uh, not even a year and a half, the message you're saying yeah, there's, some, there's so yeah. bad off field problems, and I don't know what the answer. Is. I've not heard anything, but there's something so like we just can't deal with it and don't want to deal with it, so we're out. We're done. Well, when you go to his house in training camp, there's usually a red flag. The only people I ever knew that were people who were going to their houses, and I'm not saying this is for the exact same reason. They used to Les Snead, who's now the GM of the Rams, used to yeah. go pick up Andre Rison and, and RJ Sauer. RJ Sauer, get in. Yeah, RJ. Yeah. They're not going over for afternoon tea. I'll say that. I just, I mean, well, I just. T tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to make sure my dad calls my <laughs> boss to let him know that. I'm okay with what's going on. <laughs> All right. That'll do it for social media questions. It's time for Monday Night Football, and it's an NFC East showdown. First place is on the line at Jerry's World in Big D. The Philadelphia Eagles at 1-1, one one, led by quarterback Jalen Hurts. Gardner Minshew on the bench. They visit Dak Prescott in the 1-1 one one Dallas Cowboys. Who you got in Big D tonight, Tom? Cowboys, better quarterback. 
Score more I'll points. I'll take the Eagles. I think the Cowboys win, but I think it's close. I think it's going to be really close. So you just agreed with me. I, I said the Cowboys. You said the Cowboys. And by the way. You said uh, Cowboys big. I did not. I said the Cowboys have the better quarterback. Listen, clean out your ears. Is Zeke going to run? Zeke going to run this year? Zeke, who knows? They're going to give him the ball today because everybody's coming down on him a little bit. Well, yeah. here's the other thing. So the far in the first three Monday nights, I'm 3-0 and in my picks. Oh. Pete is 2-0, well, no, oh, sorry. 2-0. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 2-0. Oh. <laughs> Pete is 1-1. One one. You were wrong opening weekend. What was that game? I picked the Raiders. You picked the Ravens. Correct. Yeah, there he is. Pete's out of here. Yeah, Pete, you can't even hear you. Just talk more, Pete. That's Pete Prisco, Tony Baselli, Joe Fortunato, Brent Reber, our entire crew. I'm J.P. Shadrick. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network.